All right, boys, we got a good one for you today. We got a 2017-18 airbag module from a Ford Focus. And what we're going to do is uh, this one has crash data on it. We're going to read the EEPROM, clear the crash data manually, and then we're going to um, also change the VIN number in there, all this manually uh, via hex. And then we're going to write this data back on to this um this module, and then we're going to install it in the car and test it. So this is the G1ET 14B321AC. So that's from like 16 to 2018. So we're hooked up to the PC. We're doing this all without the IM608, uh, just the XP400 Pro. Um, we're using the clip and everything is connected up. Look on my previous videos. If you haven't seen how to connect this, like and subscribe. Watch my other videos. I've got all this information on there. But this time we're going to do it hex manually editing this without any other additional software or anything. So stay tuned to the end on this one, guys. All right, so once you actually connect it up to the chip, and that's the EEPROM chip in that top corner right there, you're going to want to go on to... Okay, you're going to want to go ahead and get on your PC and you're going to want to open the Autel programming software. If you don't have this, then you're probably not a, one of my subscribers as well. If you got an XP400, I gave you the link to this also in a previous video. But you can like and subscribe to this video. Shoot me an email in the description. You'll see my email address, and I'll send you the link to the software. Um, you go into uh, select EEPROM ST, and this model is actually a 95640. That's it there. You hit OK. Um, it's telling us, yes, we're going to make a new session. So it basically creates the space here to hold all the information from the chip. So now once you, uh, we're going to go to read. This doesn't give you a uh, validation option like, you know, I like to use. So you're going to want to read it twice. Um, I've previously done that. So here it is. I know it's a good read because I can actually see the module um, information right here. But you still want to read it twice and and save it twice. So you just go to save as and you save it. I've already saved this one. Um, then you're going to want to open your hex editor. I use HXD. You can use whatever you want. Okay, so we're now in HXD. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select both of these. So these are the two copies I've saved of the EEPROM. Uh, they're identical copies, and we're going to verify that and make sure that's correct. And we hit open. So now they're both open, as you can see, the one, two, and that's the original one. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is an analysis to compare it, right, to see if they are the same. So you do compare right here. And it's going to compare those two files, right? And I'm going to tell it OK. And as you can see, it says the chosen files are identical. So there's no differences. That means I had two good reads, which means that the information here is correct what's on the chip. So I'm going to tell it OK. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, I can close this one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit this one manually. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to the top here. All right. Um, I know the flags already, which ones to edit. Um, and you're probably going to ask me, how do I know what to edit? Well, the reason I know how to, what to edit is because I've got experience. Um, so, yeah. So this is not general for all airbag modules because each manufacturer, even across models, they store the information in different areas. Um, I come from a former programming background. Uh, a lot of you guys probably don't know it, but um, I'm actually not a mechanic. Um, uh, I'm an IT network engineer, and uh, I, be, I moved over to the automotive side um, when I became a car dealer. And I basically adapted my knowledge on the IT side over to the automotive side. So a lot of these things are natural for me. But... Um, the mechanic side, I suck. But when it's electronics, programming, anything like that, I think I'm undefeatable, right? So I've cleared out that information, and now I'm going to go ahead and copy these flags over. 
one second. It's kind of hard. I'm trying to do this on camera for you guys. Hold on a second. I'm going to make this a little quicker. I'm going to scroll down, grab some of the information kind of that I need. That'll make it easier and faster for this video. So I'm going to grab these. Uh, actually, hold on one second. Let's see something here. Okay. A couple blocks here. Grab a block. This is uh, the FF, by the way. Uh, if you don't know, hex, uh, these are the um, ASCII values of the hex digits, right? So basically, this FF is a blank value, right? So uh, let me give you a perfect example. Let me try to get a letter so you can kind of understand it better. Um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain that to you in the end when we get to the end because the VIN number is also in this module and we're going to go ahead and um, change the VIN number. So here we're going to want to right click, paste right. So we basically overwrote all that information there with blank values, right? Paste right. See, I'm just going, I'm just going to step it down like this. Paste right. Let me go down one second. All right. Uh, uh, paste right. I'm just going to go down and keep wiping out all these values here. Yeah, this is basically a empty flag is what I'm putting here. Wiping out the data that was there. Now that's all wiped out, that data. And we get down to this line here. And as you can see here, here's what I was trying to explain to you. These hex values correspond to an ASCII character, right? So the number one, if I highlight number one, represents the number 31 in hex. Just like the letter F represents the number 46 in hex. And you can just keep going down that line. So if we find, uh, I'm trying to find a duplicate. Here's F again, right? So F we know is 46. So if I highlight this F right here, it's going to highlight another 46 in the hex location. You see that? So each hex value translates to an ASCII character. And ASCII is the stuff, you know, letters, ABC, numbers, pound sign. Those are all ASCII characters. And these are hex digits, right? So uh, what we're going to do here, we can actually change the um, the VIN number, which I'm going to do because this module came from a different unit. So I'm going to go ahead and change the VIN number uh, to correspond to the vehicle that it is going in. Um, okay. 27. And I already know that uh, I've changed that to a 7. Um, J. Uh, 269, 269, 66, 1. I'm change it here to 27, J. It's in here three times, by the way, if you've noticed that. And I already know that it's, since it was a GL, this came from a 2017, and the J is a 2018 that it's going into. And 269, 661-7-J. Okay, now that I've done all the editing 
to this file, uh, the class data sh crash data should be cleared. I'm gonna go ahead and save as, and I'm gonna call this cleared or clean. I'll just call it clean. Now I'm gonna go ahead and write this data back to the uh, now we're gonna open the bring the programmer back up um, I'm gonna open the file now that we just saved declared file and there it is right there that's the clean one we just made open and there it is um, you can see the changes I made if you followed along um, and you should see my VIN number that I've also changed. Uh, it should be down here somewhere. Did I pass it? Yeah, there's the VIN number. All right. Last three is 661, 661, 661. So now we're going to go ahead and write this to the chip. Are you sure? By the way, if you get some bad reads, you might not be seated correctly on the chip. So you got to make sure you're seated correctly. So now that I've, now that I've written that to the, tr to the chip, I'm actually going to go back and reread it. I already got a session open here, so I'm going to tell it to read and see if that data comes back. I don't want to save this data. It's going to read the chip now, and I'm going to compare it and make sure it's the same, which I'm pretty sure it is. There it is. There's information I um, edited. This flag should be all cleared. And we're going to get down to the VIN number. 661, 661, 661. I feel confident that's a good read. The right thing, of course, would be to save this and compare it. I'm going to skip that step. Um, and uh, now we're going to pick back up at the actual vehicle. I'm going to connect this up, uh, connect to the scanner, and test it. All right, guys, we're at the car now. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install the module. Uh, this is the module that we just did. So we're going to go ahead and uh, install it. It goes right in here. There are the two plugs. And you got to make sure you screw down at least one of the screws pretty tight because that's actually what grounds this module. All right. Now we should get the airbag light. should go on and then I should go off and probably flash back on because we don't even have all our airbags in yet. And that's what happened. So... Now we're going to go into the IM608 and see uh, what we got. Right, let's go to Diag, Ford. Really? Okay. I'm gonna go into the airbag module. We're gonna see what airs we got. We're probably gonna have, uh, I would assume, uh, a seat belt and um, the wheel airbag from what I'm looking at. Diagnosis, control unit. Our, oh shoot, I meant to put RCM. Read codes. We should not have a crash flag. Well, if we do, it might be for the OCSM and whatever it is, it should be able to clear and not come back. The hard fault. Actually, got a low battery here. I'm going to need to connect up the booster. Driver front, OCM, seat belt. Eleven ninety three. There it is. Let's clear it now, and that should not come back. Your 
various codes. Yes. Okay. Read codes. 1193 should be gone now. That's the hard fault that's always going to be there, and you can never clear it unless you clear it the way that I showed you in this method. Definitely want to like and subscribe, boys, on this video, man. Some uh, user requested this method, so I decided to... Um, Let's see here if it's back. It's gone. Crash. Data is cleared. As you can see, what's left is this. I got to go into manually and clear it out in the passenger seat and the seat belt, passenger seat belt, and front steering wheel. So no more crash flag, guys. Like and subscribe. Um, the more likes I see on these videos, I can put out more things like this. I know this stuff is worth it for you guys. You guys like it. So um, definitely hit that button. And also, if it's in your heart, you feel like this helped you, put something on the, on the donation, you know? Right there in the description, you can put a donation. Buy me a hamburger, man. See y'all on the next one, guys.